All right, hey everyone, welcome to Ballroom Mastery. I'm Vaughn and I'm so excited that you're here because we're about to improve your ballroom dancing in this masterclass. Now, I've got a lot of questions here. We've had over a hundred submitted from people like you, probably you, to wanna know how to improve your ballroom dancing. Now, I have the great fortune of working with many brilliant coaches over the years and we have put these into separate categories uh, and then we've filed your questions under them to help move through some of this content. And we can't answer everything because we know that uh, to improve our dancing is a lifelong pursuit. It's something we're always moving towards. I love the saying that you can learn any ballroom step in 15 minutes, but it will take a lifetime to master. And that's so true. And so I feel like I'm still at some t stages in an apprenticeship in my dancing, but I'm happy to share uh, the, what I've learned along the way. But I would love to run through some of these questions uh, that we've found so far. So, we look at the categories, uh, we've got arms, mindset and learning, steps and technique, posture and balance, practice, feet, movement, performance, partnering, leading and following, sway, slow foxtrot, venies, waltz and of course all the problems associated with any ballroom dance. So here are some of the questions that people have been asking which you might relate to and you might even hear your own question in here. So for example, what are the correct arm positions in ballroom? Isn't an exercise to keep the frame while I'm dancing all the time? How do you maintain your frame? You can see these are three different questions from three awesome people. Uh, if we look at posture and balance, the ladies' posture in modern, I'm always awkward when I'm trying to take my position or my biggest problem is maintaining position when I'm dancing. I'd like to learn about the forward drive, right? Can you relate to these? I know I can. Um, lastly, we've got ones on movement, for example. So, you know, I'm struggling uh, with the hesitation in the quick step or how to drive forward in ballroom, especially during spins and pivots. Now, we can address these for sure and a lot of the other questions in some of the other courses and materials that we offer. But for today, I wanna stick to using the waltz as, an, as a dance we can work together with. And we're gonna move through the posture, the arms, and then movement. Three separate areas that will come together to help you to dance your best. Now, here's how you best prepare for this today. Get a glass of water, get your pen and paper, and get a small area you can do the exercise. You don't need much space. I'm in a beautiful big hall. You won't need a hall like this. You'll just need an area about a couple of meters squared or a couple of feet squared where you can do a box waltz. We're gonna implement new technique though. So make sure you've got space and time for yourself in your calendar. Do this at the studio, maybe do it at the office while the boss isn't looking, but do it for yourself, okay? Uh, because this is really valuable. We're gonna try to condense the 15 to 17 years of our study and you know, religiously obsessing about how we improve our dancing to get to the next level in you know, 20 to 30 minutes. So here we go, let's get into the masterclass. Now, first things first, let's look at our posture. This is what we're, we're gonna talk about this from the ladies and the man's perspective. I like to think of four P's when it comes to posture. We're looking at the pelvis, the posture, the poise, and then we have to practice. Right, so when we look at the pelvis, this is the fundamental area of posture that people forget about. What most people do in ballroom dancing is they come up as the lady and they're like, time to have a dance. Good luck dancing with a sack of potatoes, right? Like this ain't gonna work. Plus, you know your posture's wrong, ladies, if your lower back hurts. You should never have lower back problem from the posture in ballroom. So this is definitely not what to do. Sitting backwards is not the frame. That's just watching YouTube and misunderstanding. Now, if we understand the base of our posture starts in the pelvis, it means that if you can take a tilt back, a tilt forward, you'll feel that there's a neutral area. That's where the starting point of our posture begins. It's when the pelvis is naturally aligned where it should be. And inside of that, right where the PC muscle is, or you do your, where you do your pelvic floor exercises, that muscle in there is actually where you pull up from. When you do that, you should feel that your core naturally engages. It's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, intense feeling when you first get this, like you won't be able to hold it. It's like you're almost flexing your abs, but you're not. Now remember, if you're flexing, you're contracting. If you're contracting a muscle, um, you're actually wasting the energy and you're using your muscles incorrectly. But when you get your pelvis in the right position, it actually engages your core. Now that's what I refer to as posture, this area, right? The core is posture. So we have our pelvis, our posture, and as your body, as the movement, as our posture goes up through our upper body, our rib cage, we must be very, very aware not to stretch. And this is going to be hard for some of you because you may be at a developmental point in your dancing where you must stretch, but you're ultimately getting to a point where you don't stretch, you have no tension, you have tone. 
That's the goal, where we have our pelvis, our posture, and when we have our poise, our arms are in a position where they feel light and balanced because of our hips. One of the things I always remember my coach uh, drilling into me was that you don't have an arm problem, you have a hip problem. So our arms are related to our hips. So if I'm dancing, my arms are sitting on top of my hips. Now if my hips do this, what naturally happens in movement is my arms drop. So we actually train that way up, if that makes sense, without getting tension as we go higher. So I definitely don't want to go up, 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 up. Let's have a dance. I can't freaking move, but good luck, right? You can imagine, and ladies, you're not going to fit in that. So remember that, ladies. When you're going in, you've got your pelvis, your posture, your poise, and then you're practicing. Now, the reason I call it the tulip is because if you think of a tulip growing, the, the beautiful flower is always on a curve. What happens is that you've got your pelvis, you take your weight into your, the balls of your feet, and then through your pelvis and upper body, you actually curve to the left, upwards, always on a diagonal. It's called a dynamic spine. It curves to the left with the head up. Now, the balance is not one-sided or backwards. You're still balanced because your arms are light and upwards. Now, the way you get the curve, which is called the poise in ballroom technique, take your right hand, hold your rib cage, and turn it to the right. As you do that, let your arms stay in front of your spine. That creates the natural curve. You can see that's the ballroom position for the ladies, there. And from that, from that basic posture, you can then create shape, which is down the track. So shape is generated because of the man's lead, not because you decide to bend backwards. So that's a different topic for another time, not something we need to go into now. What you must practice is holding this poise and then use your box waltz to maintain that poise. This is the idea. You want to do your tulips holding that poise. Now, if I can do it as a dude, you can do it as a lady. It took me a long time to practice today. But the idea is we want to have our postural position always in that area where it feels light, no back bending, engaged in the postural area, and, and no tension upstairs. That's our goal. And then you might say, well, how do I maintain that? You practice it a lot, but you practice very smart. I'll give you a super secret tip. When you go to practice, what you do, very important, you don't do your choreography, repeat, repeat, repeat. Do not do your choreography. You take a basic movement like the box waltz. You take the principle and you practice only the principle in the box. You understand? Because what happens is you don't have time to deal with the forces generated from spinning or pivoting. Then you take a piece of your basic choreography and you insert the principle. Once you get to the advanced part of your choreography, you take that advance and practice it in the principle in the advanced section. And then eventually over time, you've sort of broken up your routine into segments or sections and you've practiced the principle in, in, in segments, you then start to go through segment one to segment two, and you build it that way. This is how you train this into your body. Then once a week or twice a week, depending on your practice, you then do stamina practice on the principle. So if you've been told to be here, you then challenge yourself to dance an entire dance holding that posture, but not thinking about your timing, not thinking about your expression, not thinking about lead and follow. This is the mastery, right? It's to be disciplined to take position and to make sure that you don't lose that principle. Now, men, when we're looking at our posture, we're not tulips, right? We're T's for tulips, meaning that the back must be vertical, very straight, but remember the, cur the spine has a double S shape. So I'm curving up naturally from my back. It goes out and up again. So it's impossible to try to create a flat back. This is more balletic, right? When you get this sort of action, we're not ballet dancers. So we let the curve be there. Just understand if your pelvis tilts, your weight goes onto the lady. Without even stepping, you're already impeding her. So it's very important you get your pelvis to be in that neutral position, your weight on the balls of your feet with the knees slightly soft. And when you've got your, um, this upper body position to realize your rib cage can't come forward, you want to feel that your lats here, these are the lats, they open up. So that's the position for your pelvis and your posture. Realizing your poise is actually like a T. And here's the test, ladies. Hold the man's neck. Touch it like this. 
If he has tension in his neck, it's not going to be very good for your dancing. You'll get tension through your entire body and it will push both of you off balance. So gentlemen, just to reiterate, you're going to hold your pelvis in a neutral position. You've got your posture. And as you do um, the box waltz, you can do one of two things, uh, which we'll explain in a moment. But the first one will be hold your stomach, your abdomen, and your pelvis here. So your pelvis, if, notice if you step and it drops or goes back. This is the most common problem. I've taught hundreds and hundreds of people. This is the most common problem. It's happened to me too, so I understand it. So when I go forward, if my pelvis goes back, I'm gonna my momentum dies. I'll never get the beautiful flight that I'm looking for, and I will drill into my lady, which I don't want to do, right? I want a partner at the end of this who's happy with me. So if I'm holding my posture, and I'm moving forward, I'm monitoring my hips, making sure my pelvis is always in a good position. What I do to ensure that is within the middle of my pelvis, there's a PC muscle. I'm lengthening that, making sure as gravity pulls me down or I get drawn to the center of the earth, that I'm lifting through that to keep my hips balanced. Once I can do this, I can hold that position. I can do my box waltz, right? And I want to maintain my hip position all the time. From here, we have a base to develop our arms. So I hope that helps you. That is our postural position. Now, if we look at our arms, they sit on top of what? Our hips for both men and ladies. So what we're going to talk about now is going to be the same. We want to understand that when, I, when we're holding our arms in position, that they should feel, and these are the two T's to think about, tension versus tone. Tension is, well, another way to think of tension is tension ties, relaxation renews. Now, we don't want to be relaxed. Relaxed is when we're like sacks of potatoes. Tensions when you feel stimuli constantly through the tendons, the joints, the ligaments, and the muscles. There's just flexation the whole time. Boom, so you can see my muscles are very tense. I'm holding my body up and out. OK, you might do this for a little bit when you're a junior, but your goal is to actually remove the tension. And you can do that by practicing crossing your arms in this soft, flowing motion. You've got to practice getting this coordination, get your pelvis right. And then what you do with the arms, gentlemen, you bring the, the fingertips into your sternum and you make sure your elbows are in front of your spine. You make sure your elbows are not back here because that is now going to push your chest forward like I told you not to do before. And then what ends up happening is by having your elbows in front of your spine, they are naturally lower than your shoulder. This is another checkpoint. They're not as high as your shoulder. You can see the difference in the arm line now, right? This is where me most men have a problem. This will hurt your shoulder probably to a bad point if you keep doing it. So the natural alignment of the shoulder is actually out on a diagonal. Now, if we hold our arms in our sternum with our pelvis and we make sure we're lengthening as we lower, we can now do our box waltz. And this is a fantastic way to train your arms. Now, some of you have written, how do I maintain my frame? Literally, this is it. Box waltz, put your arms like this and do one full song and notice your arms sag you need to hold them in place. And you, that's because this is not functioning as well as it can, and your muscles probably just aren't trained to do it. There's no secret um, tip that's gonna make your arms stay up. You need to practice holding them in position, the right position, because if they drop here, this feels like you've taken all of the energy out. You could do this all day long. This is not the exercise. It, you should be sweating your face off doing this exercise, all right? This is not easy. It burns. It still burns me, and I know how to do it. Right? So once we do that, we can then go to the next movement. Okay? So that exercise we do for both men and ladies. I did talk to the gentleman there, but we can do it for both. We now unfold our arms. Right? So we do the same idea. Pelvis. Now we're looking at the posture, the four Ps. Now we're going through our arms. The arms unfold below the shoulder, in front of the spine, and this folds 45 degrees. The right arm comes down. Think of it going towards the lady's right shoe. Okay? We actually want to make sure that there is a uh, what's called the golden ratio, right? Where this arm is not here. You see the difference? We're not too high, we're not flat. 45 degree angle on the left hand, right arm is also going down. So the way that my uh, coach, Ann Gleave, would tell me about the arms, a good little tip is that if you get your arms here and you, you lengthen through your fingertips and you turn your palm up but using your bicep to do it and then you fold your elbow in, you'll find you'll get a better arm line on the right arm and the left. So the exercise is this. You bring the arms up, you rotate the biceps. So you don't rotate the palms, you rotate the biceps to turn the palms, and then you fold in from the elbows, and you can see my line is now better. And now I practice with my pelvis this box, and I do it 
as often as I can. And then what did I say earlier about practicing? You do it through basic movement first. You do it until it becomes natural. And you do it with the partner, and hopefully the lady isn't hanging in your arms, because what's she going to do? Well, look at her arms. She's got her tulip going on, and her arms are now going to go in front. Think of an oval, ladies. You're half of the oval. You're never back. Your arms are also not behind your spine. Your elbows are in front of your body, and they are also lower than your shoulder. Now you hold your arms up to the man, the left hand being on the inset of his bicep, and this just holding. Now, gentlemen, I often notice women have their arm like this because of your wrist. So when you're holding, guys, make sure her elbow can swing low like that. That's where she should be, not here. This is a big problem, it's pushing her off. She has to be forward to be able to comfortably sit in that position. And ladies, you practice this exercise as well. So you've gone from here to folding out and you practice the arms and notice if they get heavy. And if they do, you've got to push through that barrier and keep training them, keep training them. And then lastly, uh, once we've got our posture, we've got our arms together, we then have to look at our quality of movement. Now, this is a big subject, just like most things in dancing. But let's break it down to something really simple. Our feet. I think that I can trace back most problems to people's feet. I'm going to put it to you like this. The very first thing I learned in ballroom dancing is also the very last thing I did before I retired in our professional career. So we had the privilege of working with uh, Anthony Hurley. This, this man wrote the forward in the ballroom technique book. He's good friends with Bill and Bobby Irvine, um, Alex Moore, who literally is the man that wrote the Imperial Society of Technique for ballroom dancing. What we and American Smooth use for ballroom dancing. Um, genius, right? So he's still alive, yeah? We would have lessons with him. And he, he just had beautiful insights, of course. I mean, he's a legend. But you know, like when you get something, it just changes your, your perspective. Now, what's really interesting is that my very first dance lessons were like, close your feet, uh, turn your toe in, right? Use CBM. My last lessons, close your feet, use CBM, turn your toe in, right? Mastering it at a different level, understanding how the body functions with that. But it's basically the same technique. It's just being refined at a higher level. And people forget that. They think they need to know more. Often we need to learn less and do what we're doing at a higher level. And that's what I'm going to say here with your feet. Go back to your basics. Get your pelvis right for both man and lady. Get your postural position right. I'm going to dance it as the man. And now we're going to focus on our feet. Now, if we look at the feet, they must be, and this is, again, I notice this all the time with couples. They'll have their ankles apart, but their toes together. We need the instep of the feet the ankles, the toes together as closed in equal proportion. So not here, not here, not here. That is the only definition of closed I know. Now, if we take a step forward, it is not diagonal or slightly forward and to the side. It is forward on the heel. We step to the side on a toe. We close on a toe, our feet together, and we lower the closing foot. This is vital to understand, but it's so basic, but people screw this up all the time. If we go backwards, we reach from the tip of the toe, then the ball and then the heel. Then we go to the side and then we close again and we lower, making sure our feet come together. Now, even as I do that, I can feel my body training itself to do it right. It's wanting to go in the right direction. I know sometimes it wants to go elsewhere. I'll explain something else about the feet for movement. If my weight is on the outsides of my ankle feet, I'll have bad balance. So if I go up on my toes and my ankles don't come together, you can see I struggle because my weight wants to go outside. This is how people lose balance. So the biggest tip I can give you for movement when we think about our feet, we're going in a straight direction, number one. When we go to the side for number two, as we're closing, we're actually using the inner thighs, not squeezing them, but we've got to make sure that we use the inner muscles, the insides of the feet to come together. And the analogy that Anthony would tell me would be like, imagine that you're a kid and you're playing with your spaghetti. You'd always pick it up and go, and it would sort of just fall out of your fingers. That's how we close in ballroom dancing. So when we're swinging, right, we go to the side, we're swinging up, the feet come together like a big freaking noodle, right? Big spaghetti. One, two, and then they close on three. We're holding our posture and our arm positions, closing our feet as best as possible, two, three. Right? And you'll feel as you do that, it's going to be challenging, I guarantee you. Because we haven't talked about spinning. We've only talked about going literally stepping and going to the side. We haven't incorporated turns, rotations, or pivots. Because if I'm of the belief, if we don't get this right, as you go through complexity, which means we go from basic movements like straight forward and sideways steps, and we go into turn spins and pivots, 
the degree of difficulty astronomically increases if you can't do this. So your pivots, for example, won't work very well because you have no idea how to use your feet on a basic level. So I don't care what grade you are, what level you are, how long you've been dancing. And I get a lot of people who get big egos because they've been like, I've been dancing 20 years and I've heard this a million times. I look at their feet, they can't even close their feet. And they're like, why can't I dance well? That's the reason. What makes us professionals different? We are so obsessive on stuff that beginners hate to be obsessive about. We're like, how can I close my foot better? Ah, and they're just like, I've got to get that close. And it's like, that can't, we come into a lesson and we're like, oh, I can't, I can't get that cross properly. I can't get that close. My frame doesn't feel right. It's the obsessive over the detail that you learn when you first learn to dance. And I'm encouraging you now to step your game up and to re-sort of focus and hit reset on your dancing. Let's reiterate what we've done before we bring this in for a landing. First things first, we started with posture. Both men and ladies, we want the posture to be in the balls of the feet. We use the four Ps. Pelvis, posture, poise, and practice. Practice, 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 but correctly, not badly. Next, we got our arms. We use the sternum. Then we go out into our frame as the man, sternum, out into the frame as the lady, holding here. Lastly, we have our feet. We take that beautiful position and then we focus really deep on going straight line, side, closing beautifully, lowering with control. <gasps> the feet are together, the ankles are together, lovely, right? There's no wobbling. Because if you drill that in, you're gonna start to create better balance for yourself. And doing it with the proper uh, layers above, you're going to take your dancing to the next level. I guarantee you, do it for 30 days. This is my challenge to you. Do it for 30 days, send me a video of you doing this before, send me another one in seven days, 14, 28 days, 30 days. Show me what you've done. You will see very clearly a marked level of improvement. And we haven't even touched your choreography, right? Because remember, we do this with basic movement first, and then it gets in our DNA. We do it in one dance, it actually goes into the other dances. I'm gonna leave you with this. When I was in England and we sold everything to follow our dream to, to become professional dancers and we moved over there and sacrificed everything, we were really willing to listen. And I remember we were working with Anne Gleave and she's like, if you ever get a chance to work with Anne or Richard Gleave, my God, do it. They are the best. They're such beautiful people, but amazing coaches. Booked out almost a year in advance, by the way, but they're freaking amazing when you get to them. She always would tell me that in Latin America, uh, in ballroom dancing, you know, to focus on these elements. And I would drill them in. What do I say? We're obsessive, right? So I'd do an hour and a half of this work every day. We didn't do any of our Latin practice for about six months. I put up, we, we realized, and we didn't also practice much of our choreography in waltz and ballroom either. We just did the basic exercises. I noticed when I went back to Latin, I put the shoes on and I was like, oh, I've never felt the floor before. Oh my God, what is this? I was like so excited. I went to, I was like, what has happened to my feet? I felt never in my life. I'm talking like almost 10 years of dancing have I felt so much connection to the floor, so much balance and control. I was like, what has happened? She goes, the principles are the same. Once you train your body, it goes into everything. So rather than focusing on, oh, my waltz sucks, but my quick step's good, if you get this right, everything changes. So that's where I leave you. I set the challenge for you. I wanna thank you for tuning in for this long with me. I hope this has been great for you as it has been for me. Please leave a comment, a question below, share it with your friends, and also check out any of the uh, products or subscriptions we have on offer if you've liked this. But in the meantime, we hope you improve your dancing fast and look forward to mastering the art of ballroom dancing with myself, uh, Vaughan Liddicote. Thank you for your time and enjoy your dancing.